Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to We're Back. Welcome to We're Back. Star Citizen Live, uh, our, our quasi-weekly show where we take about an hour out of the end of our week and we hang out with our developers. Uh, we chat all things Star Citizen, their personal lives. Uh, uh, we show our cool G.I. Joe toys sometimes. Uh, and uh, in this case of this week, uh, we're talking, we're answering questions. We're taking questions. We're putting questions to the developer. It's clear I've been not doing this for three weeks. Hi, oh, the bus thing. Joining me on the show this week uh, is an esteemed uh, a friend of the show, a, a, a man who probably needs no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, let's throw it to Cargo Chad. Cargo Chad, how you doing, man? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm in a mode where I'm assigning nicknames to everybody. Uh, you're Cargo Chad. And there's the Hydro Homies, and I'm pretty sure uh, next week's show is is about uh, Arena Commander stuff. And in Arena Three, I think I called Duncan Duncan Arena Man. Um, I don't know. There's just I'm at a point where I clearly should be stopped, and nobody is. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna jump right into it because we have a lot of questions and stuff. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, maybe four weeks ago. Uh, we had an inside Star Citizen uh, with Chad and members of the of, of, of the USPU team uh, talking about cargo hangar fr uh, hangers persistent hangers personal hangers freight elevators uh, all a bunch of really exciting stuff for the non combat oriented uh, citizen of which there are many many of you out there I count myself as one of them um, this is work that's all targeted for Alpha three twenty three uh, and recently. As I'm sure most of you or many of you might have noticed, uh, with the, this week's roadmap roadmap, uh, roadmap roundup, it's a hard thing to say out loud. With this week's roadmap roundup, um, it was recently revealed that the cargo, that the uh, instance hangers, the freight elevators, uh, the item kiosks, everything that's in that little that little cargo package, that cargo career update, uh, that's coming, still coming in the Alpha 323 branch, uh, would not be in the initial uh, release. Uh, the initial release being 323.0, and then there might be a 323.1 and a 323.2, and so that stuff's still being worked out and determined. Uh, it will still be in one of the subsequent releases. Whether again, whether that is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, whatnot, remains to be seen. Um, Joining us, so Chad, um, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, tell everybody who you are, because in case somebody didn't see the show, tell everybody who you are, what you do for Star Citizen, and what happened. Yeah. So uh, starting with the easy questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Chad McKinney. I'm a senior lead gameplay engineer um, currently in the Los Angeles studio. Uh, mainly focused on Star Citizen, so I'm part of the core gameplay group. I have a kind of sub team in that group called CGP Seven, uh, but we mainly focus on what I would say are like the features that make Star Citizen like unique. So like the big MMO style gameplay features. Cargo is like certainly one of one of the big ones, one of the big careers, right? So our team is really focused on those features. Um, and certainly over the last several years, that's been a really big focus for us. So any of the big cargo stuff that you've seen coming out over that time, physicalized cargo, whole C, all this stuff has been my team's main focus. Um, but we've worked on a lot of other stuff throughout the years. Um, but yeah, like, so what happened with cargo? Um, well, the first thing I was like, hey, is like, I don't know that there's anyone that's like more personally invested in seeing this like through than I am. So it was disappointing to come to the conclusion that we did need to pull it from 323 or push it into, you know, a point patch, but it was the right call. And there's a lot of factors that went into that. Um, just to kind of get into it, like the first thing is that it's a really, really big, it's not even, I don't even think you can call it a single feature set. It's like a whole change to the way that the game works from top to bottom in many different aspects. So whenever we started concerted development on this last year, you know, we come up with a certain schedule. And um, at the end of the day, if you look at where we're hitting, you know, while it is disappointing to see it slip, we're really close actually. It's like, it's, it's kind of like uh, throwing a dart at like a target, like a mile away, 
you know, we are a bit off. We missed the target, but we're not so far off. It's not going to be like, you know, six months from now or anything like this. So it's a bit disappointing that it missed the release, but we are really close. But so like the first thing is just like it's big and it's hard to estimate and, and quite pin down all the unknowns and everything and, and make sure that like your dates are exact by the time uh, the actual date comes up. So we're a little bit off on that part. But there's also just been a lot of things that have happened during that time. Uh, some of the stuff towards the end that have really informed that decision making are the fact that there's still some feature work that needs to be finished out. Um, there's some iteration that we're still doing on certain aspects or that we did on certain aspects of the design once we got things up and going, in particular, uh, the freight elevator kiosk UI and the item bank UI. Once we played with them a bit, we realized we needed to update them and change them to make them a better experience. And then on top of that, in particular, the hangar instancing, ASOP and transit kind of flow graph there about going from all these different stages of gameplay uh, had some stability problems. And it's the kind of thing that I really felt strongly that we can't go live with that being not really stable because if we do, and it ends up being a problem, the game essentially becomes unplayable <laughs> for the players. So it's it's not like, you know, if we went out with salvage and maybe there's some issue with salvage or if we go out with mining or, you know, the rocks sometimes crash your client like that. That is really unfortunate. Obviously, that affects a small subset happen. of people. Yes. This is the kind of thing where the game could literally just be unplayable. You can no longer players. summon your spaceships. You can no longer <laughs> load your spaceships. It's a, yeah. it's a pretty heavy thing. So like in comparison, like ever since 318, we've been a lot more cognizant of what kind of risk we want to take on whenever we're going into the release. So whenever we were coming up on the 323, we were really aware of how big this was and also really aware of like the current state of 323 without all of that feature work. And because 323 was already needing some more time to be focused on to stabilize and improve performance, we didn't want to just rush this in and then take something we already spent a certain amount of time hardening on 323 and then just destabilize it all again. And we probably just like reset our whole release kind of pipeline there, but also then taking on all the, the new risk for the cargo work. Um, but we are in a child stream of the release stream. So that means that like, we're ready to go anytime we want to, we can just pull the trigger and, and release it. We're, we're right there. So it's not like it's, stuffed away and, and, you know, some development stream that's like, you know, still in, in a bunker somewhere, like we're, we're really close. It's, it's going through the already, you know, certain steps of the release phase. It's just, we weren't ready. We didn't want to integrate it because of the risk and already the, the state of 323 itself. Um, but on top of that, like, to be completely honest there, this, this feature has been around, like I said, for, for quite some time. And there's been a lot of things that have happened just kind of outside the feature that have also contributed to it. So like, as people are probably aware, there's been some team restructuring, personnel changes, um, you know, changes to our like kind of vision and, and direction that have, you know, in particular, I think impacted like the teams of working on this feature set. So it's made it a challenge at times to, you know, stay focused on it and, and, and not be it. Uh, affected by all that people changing, bringing people on board and getting them up to speed about, you know, the whole project and, and everything. So it's, it's been a, a whole journey, but we're really close. Um, it's, it is disappointing to, to put in this much effort that we've put into it and then miss it. But, um, I felt like it was the right call. So. I, I appreciate, I appreciate your candor on that uh folks in the chat right here are saying oh so they don't want another 318 they admit it yeah <laughs> i mean i don't think i didn't yeah, I, I, we, I we don't either have, i would not have thought that would have been a surprise to to anybody or a mystery to anybody um i am often quoted as saying you know we have the same conversations that 
our backers have. I, I, I'm just, so I'm, I'm going to talk to you, John. I'm going to talk to them. We have the same conversations you guys do. We just have them a few weeks earlier. We have the same concerns. We have the same excitements. We have we take the same blows to the head. Uh, it's and yeah, three uh, three twenty three hit us as much as it hits you uh, in the in the heart and the head uh, in the fields. Uh, we we don't want we don't want that to happen again. Is this me sitting here saying that? It's never going to happen again. No, I'm not going to sit here and say something will never happen. But everybody here is working very hard to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And decisions like this one are one of the things that have to be done in order to ensure that uh, from time to time. So it is still 323. Uh, it is still, uh, 323 X. Uh, whether that's 323.1 or 323.2, it's too early to say. Whether that's uh, before Invictus, at Invictus, slightly after Invictus, it's too early to say, uh, but yeah, like 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 Chad said, it's all there. It's all still in the branch. It's basically when everything else is stabilized and secure and in a place that we're happy and whatever. Then it's like, okay, now let's introduce this uh, this 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 new thing here and and see how that affects things and fix those things. Because yeah, it's Chad made another great point. This is literally your ability to summon and access your spaceship. It's it's a fundamental change to the way everything moves in the persistent universe. So it is not a small feature, but uh, 323 has a whole bunch of other features. We're currently 13, 13 14 episodes in this season. It's normally on 10 episodes. We got a bunch more coming. It's a huge, huge patch even without this. So we'll get all that stuff in, stabilize all that stuff, and then turn our attention back to this. Well, Chad's attention probably will never turn. All right, so with that, let's jump right into the questions here. Uh, this qu this, this uh, uh, show was originally scheduled for two weeks ago, uh, so we put up a thread and collected questions. Um, we didn't have the show two weeks ago because uh, uh, Jared fell down and knocked himself out. It's a true story, actually. <laughs> I knocked myself out, got a concussion. Mostly back and normal now. Got a haircut. Uh, so we're going to jump into this. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> you can't tell the difference between concussed Jared and non-concussed Jared? <laughs> Neither could my mom. All right. So uh, we collected a bunch of questions. We're going to just jump right in. Uh, the first series of questions, let's, let, 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 let's, let's talk about the personal hangers for a while. We'll get into overall cargo gameplay and stuff. Uh, but let's, let's, we have a bunch of questions that are focused primarily on the hangers. So let's jump into those. One of the big questions folks had after they watched ISC was, how do we prevent unwanted people from getting into our personal hangar? I mean, obviously there's some kind of uh, a security around the elevator and stuff. Uh, we recorded for ISC, but it didn't make the cut at the time. Uh, but also what stops people from just charging the outer doors? and getting in there. What can you tell us about access restrictions? Yeah, so the first thing I'll say is what, with everything, this is like the first release of this. So what we come out with now isn't the necessarily like our final vision or where we leave it. And I can tell you that we already are going to continue working on this after this release. So there's going to be more to be done all around. But um, for this release, the way that it's gonna work is if somebody who is not in your party somehow ends up in your hangar, then what's, what we'll do is we'll treat it kind of similar to the impounding behavior that we have for the landing areas, where they'll get a bit of a warning, but then soon thereafter, they're going to just get kicked out and teleported out into the station. If they're in a ship, the ship will get impounded, and that'll be that. It's in an armistice zone, so the players won't be able to like draw weapons or shoot or anything like this. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but... Uh, we do want to make sure that like players aren't just you know murdering each other in there um but we can do better like i said we want to have improved security in the future and make it a more uh, less gamey kind of experience to have heightened security in there but it is just going to be using the impounding and teleporting behavior for this release does that include so obviously there's, there's some time limit there, there's, there's some time period a couple seconds or whatever uh if I grab some, if, if I get in there really fast and I pick something up <laughs> before I'm impounded, do I do I do I teleport out with my stolen booty? Uh, you, you will, but I mean it'll be considered stolen at that point. Okay. Um, yeah, like 
there's more to be done there i think to make that like a more well-founded experience but like for now yeah you'll you'll get it but it, it will have been stolen i think it'll probably prove challenging to do a lot there like in 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 practice uh but i'm not going to be surprised when we go live i'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to try to grief things and um we might have to react in in particular but uh it's it it's uh just one of those things where we need to spend more time with it to make a more well-founded like full solution there so yeah. we're going with the kind of easy or quick but uh clean solution of just like yeah just teleport people out and and just you know don't don't try to be too clever about it Ryukashin, right Ryukashin in chat says challenge accepted chad like, like there's, right. there's going to be an array of, of, of lightning fast thieves trying to get in and grab stuff before it'll, it'll become a challenge it'll become the 323 personal hangar thievery challenge watch it'll happen um in the chat they asked okay so that's how uh, intruders what about uh, uh group members party members uh what's their access to your hangar like yeah so if they're in a party with you if, so, if someone's in a party with you they have access to your hangar even if you're not there. So uh, let's say like I, my home location is area 18 and, and Jared, you're in a party with me. You can go to area 18 and you'll have access to my hangar. You can go in when I'm not there. You can go in while I'm there. You can use the freight elevator kiosk while you're in there. You can use the item bank. We want to make multi-crew gameplay as seamless as possible. So this is something in particular that we were definitely really thinking about throughout the whole process. Uh, effectively, the way that it'll work is when you go to the uh, access elevator in the station and you call the elevator, you're not going to get a list of every hangar at the station. Like I can't just go to somebody else's hangar randomly. Rather, what has to happen is I need to be in a party with them. And then when I go in the hangar, I'll see my hangers in the elevator list and any party members hangers in my list as well. This is also another way that we tamper down on some of the, the griefing. It, it doesn't get rid of it immediately. Like I'm totally aware that someone can just walk into the, the elevator. But the point is that you can't just without someone there, use the elevator and go to somebody else's hangar like independently. However, you can do that if you're in a party with them. That's also a way to manage uh, kind of the, the rights. So if like you're in a party with somebody and they end up misbehaving, all you need to do is actually just like kick them from your party and very quickly they'll just be removed from the hangar and, and kicked out. So it's a way for the players to kind of control uh, some of the access that they're giving to other players. But when they have given that, we do want to make sure that it feels like a, a very like a seamless experience. Um, yeah, and again, uh, we actually had a whole thing recorded on that and stuff like this, but we, uh, it just, for whatever reason, it didn't make the, the show and we knew we were having the follow up here. So I'm, I'm glad we got to cover it. Um, the person for 323, the personal hanger, and I'm glad you mentioned that even when this goes out in 323X, this is still not the end all and be all of this work. Like anything else for Star Citizen or any MMO, the work continues to iterate and evolve beyond this. For 323, your personal hangar is it's one it's your home hangar it's it's at your it's at your um your 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 home, your, your home base whether it's uh area 18 or microtech or, or lauraville or whatnot and the size that you get is based on the largest ship that you currently own at the time that you log in and, and pick it the next question uh says what happens if you buy a larger ship after that what happens to your hangar if you buy, end up buying a ship that's too big for the hangar that you've been assigned? Yeah, great question. Uh, it's one of those things that like I should have gone into more detail on in the ISC. It's funny, even when my wife watched it, that was the very first question that she asked me after it was done. Um, so like, I know everybody was like, that's, you know, immediately, well, ah, what if I get another ship or whatever? Um, so yes, we've, we've thought about that. Um, for this release, again, this is just the first release. We're gonna we're gonna improve on this aspect of it. For this release, the way that it will work is, if you buy a new ship, whether that be outside the game or in game with in game currency, and then you go to request that ship, you can't do it if the hangar isn't large enough. So instead, what would happen is you would be given a what we call a public hangar, 
And a public hanger is similar to a personal hanger. Just the difference is, is that if you were to leave the location, anything that you left in that hanger will be um, cleaned up and, and, and thrown away. So you can't treat it like your personal hanger, like the personal hanger, you can decorate and leave all this stuff everywhere. You log out of the game, log into the game. It's all still there, et cetera. The public hangers uh, aren't like that, although they're not really that different. And what I mean by that is uh, one of the things I didn't have time to really go into in the ISC is, you know, how, how does all this work when you're not at your home location and you're not using a personal hangar? Let's say my home location, again, is Area 18 and I go to Bajan Point and I land. Um, those are still persistent hangars. They're just not your personal hangars. And, and the distinction here is just that if I were to take my ship and land at Bajan Point and then I'm given a public hangar while I'm at Bajan Point, while I'm there, anything that I leave in there is going to stay in the hangar. So let's say I just drop a bunch of boxes on the ground and then go into the station to sell some commodities or whatever, or do anything else, me and my friend. Then I go back to the hangar. The stuff in that hangar is still there. If I'm going to log out of the game and log back into the game, I actually still have my stuff there. It's only when I purposefully leave the location that that stuff is, is taken away. So that's a, a public hangar. And when you it, say you, taken away, mm -hmm. what do you mean? You lose them. They're forfeit. Yeah. So don't, again, don't leave it's your something stuff that we want to improve on in the future. What we would prefer to have is uh, rented storage. Where, and in fact, I'll get to that in just a moment. So that if you leave, it's more like you kind of have to like buy it out of impounding, you know, or pay like the fee for for the storage costs. For now, it's just they're going to be discarded. You will get a warning when that happens, so that you know that you're going to lose that stuff if you were to leave it on the ground accidentally in the public hangar. But um, for now, you, you, you're just going to lose them. But the, the kind of the, what, what it, my point was with bringing all that up regarding your own ship is that it's going to be the same behavior as if you were to go to a different location in the game. But that is still a somewhat persistent experience anyways while you're there. It's just not, you, it's what we won't do and where I think some people have, you know, kind of imagineered is that like we would like grow your hangar magically larger and like rearrange the things like we're not going to do that. And instead, what we want to do in a subsequent release is to add a, a whole pipeline and feature set for upgrading your hangers, including like moving things around. Uh, and on top of that, renting the hangers at other locations in the game. Like it's not the intention that the hangers are only at the initial home locations. It's just where we're starting now because we don't have the time to implement all of the feature work and back end that's needed for rentals and upgrades. Yeah. Uh, with including like fees and all over time and all this stuff. So <clears throat> what what that means is just that you're gonna have the one at the home location now, but in the future, absolutely we want players to use this as a way of like kind of having a sense of progression in the game. So that when you're playing, you can accrue wealth. You can then use that wealth to expand your Kind of area of influence and, and where you can you know tag have extra inventories have extra storage locations and kind of spread throughout and i think this will become especially important once we bring more solar systems online you're definitely going to want to have i think more hangers across the different solar systems in the game so this is just step one it's not the final you know stop uh, in in this progression we know where we're going it's just trying to find the way to carve up the feature to still hit an initial release. Uh, so this is one of those things that we kind of, you know, took a step back, simplified it for now. Um, but we're going to do more. Okay. No, good answer. Um, you mentioned that uh, players will be able to go into your hangar and access your inventory or access the freight alerts, will they be able to access their own stuff inside your hangar? Yes. So if someone is in a party with you and they end up in your uh, hangar, they can use the freight elevator kiosk. And when they use it, they'll access their own inventory. And if they were to use an item bank in the um, hangar, they, they'll access their own inventory when using the item bank. Something that we actually started working on and, in fact, had working was having them also access your inventory. So like if we were in a party um, 
you could come to my hangar and then have the choice in the UI about whether you want to take things using the front elevator kiosk from your inventory or my inventory. Um, but we had some uh, concerns about like security, given that party membership isn't maybe as strong of a guarantee be because you'll end up in missions or, or doing things with people that are a little, it's a little bit maybe too uh, much power to give to somebody just because they're in a party with with you to have them access your own inventory. So we still want to do that part. Mm -hmm. We just want to add more um, security and authorization functionality to be able to say, okay, for this person, they can access my inventory, they can't. Uh, so we, we want more as far as like permissions before introducing that part, but sort of they will absolutely be able to access their own inventory in your hangar. It sounds like you've played with uh, Sean Tracy. Yes. <laughs> He, he will just jack all your stuff. And smile the whole time. Oh, yeah. No, he's very happy about it. Very happy when he does it. Um, how many home hangers uh, can a player have, and can they change the location after they choose them? Just the one for now. And no, they can't change the home location for this release. So like, once you get it, that's the one that you have. Again, in the future, we want to do more for upgrading and rental. Yeah. We will think about like moving. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that for the initial one. So there's still some, a bit of design thought about like every single corner yeah. case there about what we want to allow for players. But for, for now, for, for 323.x, um, you're not going to be able to, yeah. to move that, that, the persistent hangar location. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, uh... That that answer was 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 very candid and truthful. But I want to make sure that that's understood because when people make this decision, I want to make sure that everybody knows to consider it. Uh, when you start, th when this patch launches, you will get a decision to choose your new starting location for the duration of three twenty three until whatever comes next. When you choose area eighteen or Microtech or, or or Hurston or whatnot, uh, you are you are locking in your your persistent hanger, your persistent personal hanger for the duration of that patch until additional functionality comes on. So uh, don't lose that information in the and for the folks who are for the folks who are making the the seven minute cut down version, make sure that gets in there. Okay. Indeed, and and just to kind of preempt another, you know, I, I read everything. I, I know like every question you guys have thought about, like I, I already know, know it all. So like, and another thing that people have raised as concerns is, um, you know, pirates, like what if I'm a pirate and I don't want to like set my home location as forever to be area 18, I'm going to go to Grim Hex, you know, am I just screwed? Do I not get a, a personal hanger? Uh, the answer is again, like for 323, we just don't have the functionality to allow for those other locations to have them. But it's not that we don't want to allow that. Like we we do want to. It's just not going to be in this particular release. Um, are there plans to allow personal hangers that are not at the major landing zones? Uh, yes. in, in, in the chat, folks are asking about Grim Hex, uh, but possibly either uh, at stations or smaller ground locations or whatnot. Uh, what can you tell yeah. us? Yeah, essentially anywhere you can spawn a ship that has hang anywhere that has hangers we'll have personal hangers like that's the long and short of it so the rest stops grim hacks uh we want it to be a, a prevalent thing to give the player options of course we'll come up with our own decision making as far as the economics of it perhaps we will consider maybe charging more or less or having different dynamics for um the the rental aspect of it or or whatever um but we want it to be a very open thing. We don't want it to be constrained. Like again, another thing that I've seen people, you know, comment on is that we're trying to push people to play on the landing areas on the planets. Um, that we're putting a lot of focus to keep people on the planets. That's not actually our goal here. It's just what we needed to do to get this done for this particular release. We want people to be able to go out in the universe and claim some part of it and feel like that's their home. And if you have a preference that's not you know, on a planet that's, we want to empower that. We want you to feel like you can go somewhere else and call that place your home, Grim Hex, Pyro, wh whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and have multiple even so that you can bounce around. So if you're pe spending a period of time in one region of the game, uh, especially like if once we get more, multiple solar systems, 
we want we don't want you to feel like overly punished because you, you just have this one location and, you, and you'll never go back to it because it's so far away we want it to feel like basically we're we're, we're balancing here and this is, i think also kind of gets to kind of the core of star citizen as a game which is we're we're, we're threading this needle of a simulation and and a, a you know enjoyable game experience so we want to make physicality and inventory tie into that and make the game feel tangible, give you important decisions to consider, have um, risks involved with certain decisions so that you have to be thoughtful and, and there are, that feeds into all aspects of the game. So like, for example, let's say I have a bunch of inventory as far as like the guns and loadouts that I have access to at my home location. If I'm gonna go take a bunch of missions, it's like on the other side of the solar system, we want you to actually think about that. And then when you're over there, you you don't have as many options as you had before. You can't just quickly change out your loadout. You can't necessarily quickly stock up unless you thought about it ahead of time, right? So we want you to be thinking about it. At the same time, we don't want it to just be super punishing so that you play for like 30 minutes, die once, and then just feel like, okay, I'm just done here. I don't want to play this game anymore. We're trying to find that balance to make it an interesting, fun experience have those simulation aspects where it feels like a real space game it's not magical you can't just summon a thing out of thin air there there are uh, important reasons why you need to think about what you take with you but it's um not overly punishing which is like a different track than other games like as an example like like a game like diablo 4 or like a you know many other classic uh, big games like that game, you just have like this, inf you have this invisible inventory. I mean, you access it from a chest, but the point is you can access it literally anywhere in the world and it's all the same inventory. And that makes sense for that game, right? They're, they're, they have different problems. They have different play patterns that they want to encourage. But for the game that we want, we want it to be a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more tactile, but not as, you know, super punishing as maybe like a escape from Tarkov or something. Yeah. Cho 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 choice matters. You, you obviously want the choices to matter. You want people to benefit from good choices and you want people to to uh, struggle with poor choices. And as always, you, you bring it to that point of realism and then you bring it back to the point of fun. And that's, that's that, that, that area is always the hardest part you know, to find. I, I, I see, I see uh, who's the person, who's the person that there's somebody that the, the, Twitter algorithm has been putting in my feed, even though I try not to see him all the time. I can't remember his name. The Game of Thrones guy. Um, uh, but you know, you, you, I'm talking about the game not being a sim or whatnot. And so, uh, certain aspects, yes, are we want to push them to be more simulation-like and it, it, as close as we can get within the confines of giant shared server MMO technology, and then bring it back to the point of fun and stuff like that. So there's always that that balance there. Uh, Greasy Khaleesi. Took me a while. I remembered your name. Get out of my feed. Yeah, I keep seeing them on Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh, lobotomy. <laughs> uh, lobotomy in the chat asks, how are you going to make finding, party mem uh, finding a party member's hanger not a scrolling contest in the elevator if you're in a large party? Yeah, so whenever you go to the the elevator access in the station, when you call the elevator, that carriage is your carriage. So when it shows up, it only has the stops in it that you have access to. So by default, if you start in your home location, like area 18 in, in this example I keep using, then I would go in and if let's say I had a account that the largest ship on it was uh, a Drake Cutlass, then I would go in and I would have a medium hanger that I would see in that list. It would say, you know, whatever, C Cthulhu, Dark Cthulhu Lords, uh, medium hanger, because that would be like my name or something, so something edgy like that. Uh, <laughs> so the point is, is that like, I'll see my hanger in there, but nobody else's. When I'm in a party with somebody and then I call that hanger, I'll see their hangers at that location there as well as mine. But unless you have like a lot of, party members, that list is not going to be long. And in fact, it's going to be much smaller usually. Usually it's going to be like one or maybe two, maybe three, you know. 
uh, I am totally aware that there are people that go out into the server and they just make, you know, th this giant single server party that that person, if you're in that party, yes, you'll go in and you'll see like a, a hundred in that list. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess you, in that case, you're going to have a little bit of a rough time, but this is obviously a, a pretty big corner case. Um, so yeah, that's the main mechanism. That will get resolved as the feature continues to develop. And people, people can choose more locations. Right now in 323, they're limited to the four primary locations. But as people begin to be able to choose different locations for their primary personal hangar and whatnot, that that problem will get diminished. So yeah, it, and, it may... And actually, I'll use this as an opportunity to kind of re-impress a point, which is that it's only the ones at that location that you have access yeah. to. So if I were to go to Bajan Point, and I have a party member whose personal home hanger is at area 18. It's not going to show up. Uh, yeah, it won't show up. Yeah. So like it's it's tied to the to the location. So for that reason, it does get parsed out. And if you know, as you as you were to say, in that hundred person server, unless all hundred people pick the same home location, it's still going to be spread out amongst all the locations that they all picked independently. Um, no, Bayesian Point is not a new station. He's saying Bajini. Oh, sorry, just, Bajini. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 this, this comes up a lot. Uh, half the developers here don't know the, the term Hurston, folks. They call it Stanton. I know the Green. term Hurston. But, but no, 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 no. But I'm, I'm saying it's, it's, there's internal names for stuff, and half the time that's what po uh, folks, yes. are, folks are like, knowing. Like the number of times the, I'm going to be on the show, like, okay, which one's Stanton 2? Stop saying Stanton 2. Yeah, so we, like, we know it as Arc LEO. So that's. Yeah, Arc LEO. That's yeah. what we call it in game. So, so I'm. I'm so yeah. So the, the you, 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 you can give Chad crap for all kinds of stuff, not for not remembering the specific name of. Front-facing name is something that doesn't exist on the internal stuff. Um, I was just trying to think of something else I wanted to give you shit about. Um, how many people uh, is so? Yeah, so these parties can be pretty big. Is there a occupancy limit inside the personal persistent hangers? No, I mean it's not like uh, it's it's not like we go to a, a club and it's like oh no. Met occupancy, you're gonna to have to wait to get in. There's nothing like that. It, it's you know, if it fits, it sits. If you can cram a hundred people in there or at least attempt to, like you can do it. But it, that that's no different than right now in the game. If you wanted to go into a small hangar and try to get a hundred people on the server to, to to walk into the hangar, you could try it, right? There's there's nothing that's gonna stop you, and that's the same thing here. Yeah. I'm, I'm now I'm imagining. What an entire hangar crammed, or entire server crammed into one hangar, and the videos are going to come from that. Um, is that a knock on the door? Is somebody knocking? They're at coming the door? to take you away. Is there somebody at the door? No Just heard a knock at the door. It's not a gimmick, right? Nobody's having having me on. It was literally it was just a big knock at the door. Uh, so let's see. Something, something concussed Jared. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Did, 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 I, did I say a swear? Is that somebody coming after me? Um, all right. So we've already, uh, so, okay. More people theory crafting here. If a player is inside their ship, inside their personal hangar, and they log out from the ship bed, where do they wake up when they come back in? Has the ship been stored? Yeah, so uh, in this case, it won't be back in the hangar for this particular release. Um, again, this is just one of those things where uh, there's a lot of complexity in how the hangar instancing works and considerations across shards and uh, server meshing and all of this. So for now, no, we're, it won't be that like if you were to log out in your ship in your hangar and, and then log back in, you're going to end up in your ship in your hangar. But we do want to revisit logging in and out with the hangers in particular. So that's something that we're going to be absolutely looking at more specifically. And if anyone's kept up with my hot take commentary on, on Spectrum, they'll know there's already some discussions like more broadly about login flow. And this definitely yeah. ties into it about like just generally how logging in is supposed to work in the game. And, and hangers are an important aspect of that, uh, but we're thinking much you know, broader than that, we're thinking, you know, the whole game. So this, we also need to be thinking about things like haps, 
like bases, uh, all, all of it. So this is definitely an aspect, but in this particular release, it's, it's not going to work out like that. You'll end up just, um, locking back in the, yeah. the station. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as it is right now, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if you try to bed log in a ship in the hangar, it doesn't, it doesn't let you because to try to avoid no. it, it gives you a restriction, whatever. But yeah, as these things become more of a home for, for, for players as they begin to decorate it and it's like this, I can see I can see the desire for that behavior to change, which is probably where that question comes from. Absolutely. Um, can we equip weapons in our personal hangars despite the armistice zones? Uh, no. Um... I'm laughing a bit because there was actually something of a, a bug that we had recently with people being able to draw weapons uh, in, in the green zones. But um, no, that's not going to be possible. You will be able to use the tractor beams in your uh, arms or sorry, in the hangars to be able to move things around, but you're not going to be able to, to pull out a gun. It's, it's not going to be like a stand your ground law zone type situation. Uh, for now, you know, that's something that we maybe we revisit. I could see maybe a different location in the game, like like Grim Hacks, maybe a more um, pirate-focused uh, place, having a little bit more stand-your-ground type laws uh, regarding like what you can do. But for the moment, it's just going to be uh, you can use your tractor beam, and, and that's it. Okay. So you'll still be able to... Like, one thing we don't want, just to, to maybe unpack that a little bit, is because people are going to still be able to get in you know through these slightly corner case ways like someone can just fly in or someone can just walk into the carriage if they can draw their gun then while we can punish them for that they could just walk up shoot you in the head kill you while you're just hanging out there moving cargo and then yes they're going to get punished but like for someone that's like griefing they got what they wanted Right? It doesn't yeah. matter if they ended up dying or, or even going to prison for a period of time. They kind of got what they wanted out of that uh, situation. So we're just not going to have that here for now. We'll revisit it again whenever we have better improved security mechanisms and more uh, opportunity to consider all the, the design aspects of it as well. Gotcha. So when you use the item bank and you call up a rocket launcher, the rocket launcher comes up in a no. crate. No, I mean, you can access them. You just can't like raise them and shoot somebody with it right so you can okay. it's just as if you're in the station like you can have the gun on your back you can get the gun out you can use the tractor beam you can you can hold it you can load the guns onto the gun racks in the ship and stuff yeah yeah so like all of that's fine you just can't literally raise the gun and point it at somebody and pull the trigger that's the thing that you can't do okay right. um last of our personal questions before we our personal hangar questions before we get to the more cargo related stuff um what does all this mean for our OG hanger flare items? Uh, can we use them to decorate our personal hangers? How can we decorate our personal hangers? So first off, shout out to people who, who remember the old OG hanger flare. Um, I remember way back in the day and we had, you know, fish tanks and, and the jukeboxes and, and all of that. And um, in fact, my team was the team that worked on a lot of that stuff way back in the day. And uh, unfortunately, saw it kind of rot over time to the point that we ended up removing it. It just, it was implemented in a way that was very like divergent from where the rest of the yeah. game was going as a more persistent game. Uh, so it definitely has a special place in my heart, like, a lot of that stuff. Unfortunately, this release, we're not going to have like revisited that. The prop team would need to go back and, and uh, rebuild some aspects of it because they're quite old at this point. There's a lot of changes in the way some of the features work, uh, especially things regarding uh, interactions and, and usability and all of that. So yeah. there's some work there on the, the props and interactables team to be done. And they've been really focused on the mainline feature work for this release. So it's not something that we've had the time to get to, but it's not something that we've forgotten about. Like definitely we, we you know remember those things fondly. Um, but it is kind of easier actually sometimes to make new things rather than like revisit a, a lot of old things. So, uh, one of the things that we are adding in this, in this release is furniture. So you are going to be able to buy furniture in game at certain locations and then be able to decorate your hanger with that. 
couches and, and, and stuff like this. So you'll still have some things that are more social, that are more, you know, interesting, make it feel a little bit more homey to, to, you know, decorate your hangar with. And, and otherwise I look forward to all the fun shenanigans that people get up to with where they end up putting these things. But, uh, it's, it's, it's not like, we definitely want to encourage that kind of thing. We want players to feel like this is their home. We want players to have some fun things to, to be able to decorate and, and place throughout the world. Um, but for now, it's going to be the newer furniture, um, not the OG hangar. Yeah. It's a, as a good rule of thumb for, for managing your expectations, if you, can, if you can pull it out and hold it in your hands today, then yes. If, if, you, if you can't physically manipulate it in, in the game in 322.2 or whatever patch we're on, then no, that's the stuff that's still waiting to be brought in. That's basically the process. They got to go back. This stuff was built, like I said, uh, so a lot of it was built by our old friends at Behavior. Shout out to Dave Richard and Christine March way back when. Uh, uh, you know, it was built specifically for the hangar module. It wasn't built to be handled, uh, you know, with, 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 you know, hands and IK and, sh and stuff like that. I almost, I almost used up my second square. Um, so that stuff's all got to be converted. It was also built in a different way, different metrics, different different processes back then. So that so that process of of bringing that stuff over. Um, I've seen the zoo. They've they've built what we call it a, a zoo. It's this giant level that's just all of the hangar flare. And they're they've they've been slowly when an artist finishes on a task and he's and he or she has like two days before their before the next task is ready for them to begin. They'll go over to that zoo and, and start working on on converting another one. So it, it is a thing that's in process it's very very slow and it's, it's one of those things that i because that was star citizen when i started on so like chad we have we have a big affinity for for a lot of that old stuff i want i want my stupid jukebox i want my calendar i want my cal i want my calendar that tells me what day of the week it is in 2014 and stuff like that to, to work and i hope they don't fix that i hope it still just tells you what day it is in 2014 um yeah, that's, like that, that's a good rule of thumb, I think, for the for the players. Like, if you if you can manipulate it in game now, it's something that you'll be able to gain access to and manipulate it. Then there are going to be some things that you won't be able to move without putting them into an inventory container box um, yes. that I mentioned. I think on the ISC. Yeah. So there there, there are going to be some things that you can't just spawn at the end of the world, mainly because just the art honestly, and like the kind of gameplay setup of the thing wouldn't allow it. There's just some things right now that really weren't meant to be independently spawned as opposed to like attached to something. Uh, yeah. But there's, there's, uh, if you can, you know, play with it in the game now, Yes, and, and manipulate it, then then you'll have access. I've, I've been, I've been, I've been chasing Steve, I, I've been torturing uh, Steve Bender to, to to take that old uh, a towel, old hitchhikers esque towel from the old thing and make a Melee weapon out of it. Uh, he ignores me and walks the other direction. Um, I why. It happens more and more the longer I'm here, quite honestly. All right, so let's jump into some more cargo-specific gameplay. Um, Chad, are you are you okay if we go a little bit over the past? Over Happy the, to. There? Okay. Yeah, like what's going to happen actually is like once I'm done with here, I'm going to get ready and I'm going to hop on a plane and then I'm going to a bar citizen in Chicago. So right, uh, I'm good. Okay, so we're, 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 we'll, we'll take some, we'll, we'll do some extra time. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll put some extra bonus time on this one because there are a lot of questions. This is a big topic for folks. Um, how does manual or auto loading work at outposts, scrapyards, and other non hangar specific locations? Uh, great question. The answer is it won't. <laughs> so if, <laughs> if there's not a hangar, you what won't have auto loading as, as an option. Um, that is a feature, not a bug. Like the 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 point is, is that like a small outpost is not the kind of place where you're going to be doing large trades. We're going to be. Um, this is something I, I'm not sure I got quite into as much detail on the ISC. But one of the big changes that we're making about how you buy cargo is is changing it from being a raw resource allocation. So you won't just be picking like three SEU. And then have the system like automatically figure out the configuration of cargo that you would need to put that into your ship. Rather, the um, the places in the game are going to have certain stock, and that stock will include the box size. So the outposts, the smaller locations in the game are going to only trade in smaller volumes and smaller box sizes. So like one SEU, two SEU, and the idea is that like those um, 
places, you're going to just manually load it yourself. And you wouldn't show up with a C2 and fill it with like 700 SEU of one SEU boxes and then have it automatically pack it for you. That's not the point of that location in the game. It's not the, the route that we want that to satisfy. It's not what we want to do is differentiate the game. We want the locations in the game to serve different roles. We want there to be a reason to go to different places in the game. And we want there to be a reason to use different ships in the game. If you're a player that owns multiple ships, you will be now rewarded for you know, good decision making as far as like your trade route considerations and your location considerations and your ship choices. Uh, and on top of that, if you party with people, you're going to benefit from the, let's say the, the choices that you have as a group. And if you're on a larger ship, you're going to benefit from them being able to help you. So for the, these smaller locations, we're, we don't want there to be like a giant hangar there that like sucks your ship into it and then just magically puts all of this huge amount of cargo volume that's like, I guess, yeah. just hidden underground or something. That's not really the, the point of those locations. On the flip side, a bigger trade route location like the LEOs, which are a hub for feeding the landing areas, those are meant to be big routes. So like they are going to support automatic loading. We want there to be big ships that go there and get these big amount of loads and haul them around. But for those, we would like them to deal in the kinds of box sizes that make sense for high volumes. Uh, so like the, the 24, the 32 SEU boxes, uh, it, think of it like this, like you wouldn't show up to, uh, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a reference. I don't know if anybody knows what a loves is, but it's like a small <laughs> truck stop, right? Yes. <laughs> so you wouldn't show up to that with like a huge truck. I mean, you would with a truck, but you wouldn't then like take, you know, 10,000 boxes of Twinkies and then load up your, your truck and then go to another, you know, love somewhere in, in, in this, in the world. That's not how trader outs work, right? Yeah. Instead, you have smaller shipments that will, you know, feed smaller routes. Uh, but then for bigger trade routes, we have like these huge, uh, ships that, like, you know, carry huge loads of freight across the Panama Canal, all this stuff, and they have really particular routes that they go to with these much larger shipping containers. So that's the idea here is that like, there are going to be places that just deal in higher volume. There are going to be places that deal in smaller volume and there are going to be some places in between. The locations will have the facilities there that make sense for them. Um, however, that means that like, if you, I totally understand there might be someone in the game that just never wants to pick up a box, right? They just never want to do that. And like, yes, that means that sometimes whenever you're hauling cargo at these smaller locations in the game, like the outposts that don't have automatic loading, you're going to have to take the box out of your ship and put it onto the uh, freight elevator. But that is a pretty um, short uh, loop because the way that it's going to work at the outpost is that the freight elevator is literally attached to the landing pad. So it's, it's a, a matter of a few feet away. Um, it's not like you have to go through this huge experience. You just land, you put the thing on, on the freight elevator, you interact with it. It'll take you not very much time again, for the loads that you're dealing with, we're not going to have you move 500 SEU at an outpost one box at a time. It's, these are going to be small loads. Whereas on the flip side, if you want to move 700 SEU manually from a C2, um, at, you know, whatever area 18 or some other location in the game, and you have a crew of people, you can do that. And you'll potentially be rewarded by having a more favorable profit margin. Um, but obviously you're going to have to have thought about that ahead of time. If you chose a bad configuration of boxes that might take longer. Whereas like if you bought your cargo at places that dealt in larger box sizes, you're going to give yourself an easier time. So we're basically giving the players more choices, but also parsing it out to where it makes sense about like why, why you would choose certain routes and what you're trying to, to get out of it. Um, you said loves and there, there was, there was this one we used to go to I, I was, I was, I was association with hostess chocolate pudding filled pies that loves. And I was yep. thinking, uh, there's probably, there's probably a Bucky's out there that's big enough that would, that would break the oh, analogy. Oh, a Bucky's. Yeah. There, there, there's, there's probably one Bucky's out there that's big enough to break the analogy. Um, <laughs> 
for auto loading. Now, obviously, the time the, the time for an auto load is something we can adjust, and it's something we yep. absolutely, certainly will adjust. We, uh, it, it's whatever it is in three twenty three will not be what it is in subsequent no. batches. And, and just... in fact, uh, I will point something out, which is a lot of people in the ISC, of course, dissected the video to death. And so one of the things that they did is they would pause the video when, when the UI, the different UIs were on the screen and like really, you know, delve into like the pricing, the times there. I will just say all of that was dev <laughs> data. Like, don't yeah. take that seriously because that's just the data that us as, as like developers working on the game are testing with that is not tuned data that the economy team has finished. Yeah. Um, so I don't want people to have certain expectations about timing or pricing and then get to the game and realize it's different and then be disappointed or, or, or surprised. Yes. Uh, that just don't take those numbers seriously, yeah. I guess yeah. is, is what I... Yeah, it, two things I always want to remind folks of, sorry for the detour. Uh, obviously there's the alpha live environment where things will change. Then there's PTU before that then there's Evo Cotti before that, and then there's where uh, my, my guys, you know, Will, Dave, Alex, and Toby are working uh, in, in the absolute shit. I'm gonna say it. it, it it's they're, they're saints. They do they do they do work that I could not do. Uh, I don't have the patience for it because that, that information is all temporary. It's all just don't believe anything you ever see in a screen in a UI screen on ISC. It's way too early in the process. It's it's learn learn the lessons. Don't give yourself the ulcer. Uh, just remember it's work in progress. It's why we that's why we stick it on there. Uh, and then also yeah, and, and it, it, kind of to to go a little bit further with that, the one of the things that we want to be like kind of just like a philosophy. I'll put it like this a, a philosophy that we have here is we, we want to encourage people to engage with the manual loading. So you should expect that the pricing and the loading times are going to be more favorable for manual loading. If you want to do automatic loading, that's totally cool. We want that to be a viable path. It's not going to be unprofitable, but it's not going to be as profitable uh, or even necessarily as um, time efficient as manual loading. So we want it to be an important trade-off. For, for players to, to make the, that decision. In addition to that, we want the, the pricing and the load time to be a little bit more intelligent. Like it will take volume into account for sure. So like more cargo is gonna take longer uh, and cost more. But the other thing is we want to encourage people to be making smart decisions. Like you shouldn't show up to a place and think you can buy 700 one SEU boxes and the cost to and time to load that is going to be the same as if you got whatever, you know, the same amount, but in 32 SEU boxes, it's much more efficient to move a larger box than a lot of smaller ones. So for that reason, the pricing and timing is going to be considered of the number of boxes, not just the volume of the SEU. So there, there's a little bit of nuance there, but I, I won't you know, to be transparent about like the thought process going in there and like why it is the way that it is and what we're trying to encourage. Um, let's see, uh, is the mass of cargo still planned to affect ship performance? Yes, it won't for this release, but it's um, something that absolutely we've, we've been talking about. Part of the problem is the, it's more like we would have done it in fact, even this release, but there's some some interesting, I'll, I'll put it like uh, considerations for the physics aspect of it. Right now in the game, uh, if it wouldn't be too difficult to make the cargo boxes that are attached to the actual cargo grids impact the mass of the ship. But the problem is, is that if you were to detach the cargo and just lay it in the ship, it won't because anything that's inside the zone of the vehicle doesn't contribute to the mass of the vehicle at the moment. But that's true of anything. Like you could drop a gun, you could, you know, dead bodies. It doesn't matter. Anything you just chuck into the 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 ship loose is not necessarily uh, contributing to the mass either. So that's like kind of a bigger question about how we deal with mass inside ships. 
it also feeds into the other things about forces and you know inheriting forces and pushing things around which we also want to use to encourage people to use cargo grids as um an advantage over just dropping stuff in your ship um so it's we're not there yet we've actually we've absolutely been talking about it actively it's something that we are planning on um, adding because we want again that to add some interesting decision making as far as uh, not just the the ship but also uh if you load up a ship full of cargo we want it to fly slower you're going to be a little bit more da- like endangered so if you're a big hauler you're not going to be as agile while you're moving your cargo and that might encourage you to want to party with other people who can uh, defend you. Uh, and then also on top of that, it can help you make considerations during the loading process. You may want to spread the, the cargo around in your ship, which will take longer, but it'll make it maybe fly better. So to give you some interesting decision-making during the, the, the loading itself. Uh, but yeah, not, not for this release. Okay. Uh, speaking of cargo grids, uh, when we did our two point, two point, two part, uh, design brief uh, cargo career November last year I think uh, uh, you mentioned that eventually we'll be able to attach almost anything to a cargo grid uh, how's progress on that going it's coming but it's not as far along as I was hoping uh, so I think this release there are going to be some probably notable things that are missing I don't want to say just yet exactly what but um Certainly vehicles are not going to be able to be attached to cargo grids. This release that one I will speak confidently on. Um, and that's just more of uh, considerations as far as the uh, if the entities themselves are really ready to be uh, attached to things dynamically like that for physical reasons, or if they're ready to be just spawned in the world independently like that. So for example, ship items, a lot of them are not really designed to just be sat there in the world. They have like, if you look at them, some of the geometry on them isn't even like complete. So uh, it's it's that kind of stuff where uh, we're not quite there yet. And there might be some other gameplay aspects with that with more testing that we find that whenever they're attached, they cause problems that need to be sorted out. And we might have to pull back on what uh, ends up being literally attachable to the cargo grid. That doesn't mean that they may not be able to be called up on the freight elevator because we can still place things loose on the freight elevator, but not literally attached to the grid in those situations if we were to need to. But as far as like attaching them to the cargo grid, for example, on the ship, and then flying around with them like on the exterior of the whole sea, like in the ISC that we showed, we still have that ambition. Um, it will be probably, I think, a, 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 a progress, you know, kind of work over time as far as like expanding everything that will be attached. Uh, it's still the governing principle, which is uh, if it's in game, I, I want it to attach to a cargo grid reasonably. Okay. Uh, so not a thing that probably but not-, not corpses. I know I made that joke actually. <laughs> yeah, like that I would say is an unreasonable thing, even though I, I mentioned it as an example, you can't, you won't be able to attach a corpse to a cargo grid. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared. Will you be able to attach a spacesuit to the cargo grid? Uh, yes, but that's because the space uh, suit will be a box, right? So those things have already had those considerations made for them so that you can drop um, it on the ground and it ends up being a box. That should be able to be attached to the, the cargo grid fine. Um, what you won't see is the the loose, like, you know, spacesuit that's kind of like as if it were on a person on the ground with like soft body physics or something like that okay. that we don't we don't support so, so again it doesn't work like that in game now so you wouldn't attach it to the cargo grid like that the way that you do see those things is they're in the boxes and the boxes you will be able to attach so, 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 so you're saying anything that i can hold or wear is not going to attach to the cargo grid yeah like if you can physically manipulate it now then that's something that you can reasonably expect the, the vehicles, I think, are... Reason are expect biggest. not to attach or to attach? To attach, yeah. Because what if I just hold on to the thing and then I attach the thing to the cargo grid? You have to use the tractor beam right now. Okay. 
think you should reconsider the corpses thing. I'll, I'll keep it in mind, <laughs> but I have questions. Uh, when you think about it, everything is cargo. That's my, that's my including point. Including coffins. That's my point. It just seems like you're gonna go, you're gonna go all the way there and then just stop before we become reavers. I want to see I want to see a giant reaver hull e. Just a giant floating ship of the dead. You, you switch to his face. I can't. We're just staring at my face for us. You see Chad's face. Just no. Okay. I, oh, he's, he's he's stuck. I, I broke Chad. Okay. Um, here, here, here's here's a question. Uh, is there? <laughs> we're, we're we're in overtime, folks. So it's just don't think we're going to get anything good. Is there any future at all whatsoever for cargo decks beyond just buying tractor beams and empty containers? Great question. I, I think cargo decks are an interesting thing in the game that were, I would say, designed at a time that we didn't really fully understand the full scope of the game that we were going to have and how exactly when we wanted the cargo loop as a whole to like come together. I do think they still serve an important role at the moment, but I no. there is work there to figure out they like what is the best thing for them overall. So I don't want to give a definitive answer on anything like that. Um, I will just say that like I we're totally aware that they they're kind of in an awkward place maybe you know at the moment as far as like what role they're serving and what we intend for them in the future. Um, but we yes we do want them to be no. more integrated. No no cargo decks are about fifteen pounds of useless stuff in a five pound sack, Chad. I can't see his face if you don't switch back to him. Ah, uh, I'm just saying they, they they could use a pass. Um, yep. uh, what happens if we bring contraband or stolen goods back to our personal? We're back to personal hangers. So what happens if we bring what happens if we bring contraband or stolen goods back to our personal hangers? Uh, are we unable to store them? Do they flag the the the, the popo? What happens? <laughs> uh, so for the moment. Mostly it's going to work like the way that it does in game now. Um, with the caveat that um, hauling missions in particular are going to be different. So if you just stole somebody else's cargo box and store it in your inventory, it's not you're not necessarily going to get arrested. You won't be able to sell it somewhere. So you're going to be like like in Area 18, for example. But you're not necessarily going to get arrested for that or fined or anything for just having it on your person. However, uh, for the hauling missions, we want to make sure that players are incentivized, I'll say, to actually deliver the goods rather than just short circuit it. So if you were to, let's say, take a, um, a mission from Crusader and you get this big hull sea worth of, of cargo that you're intended to deliver, if you're going to take that to a location that's not the delivery destination, the system will know and it actually will flag it and say like, okay, this is like a high risk thing. You shouldn't have it, and um, you'll you'll be notified. If you won't be able to sell those at a normal uh, location, or sorry, let me re say that. If you are trying to sell it, it's going to be flagged, and actually, you'll get fined for it. it. Even if you were to take it to like Grim Hacks, let's say for example, a place that would normally take like a no questions asked type um, terminal and you were to sell it there, you can, but the the price is going to be dramatically reduced because it's going to be considered high risk. So the idea is that we don't want players to basically take these missions and just go to like the nearest like like Grim Hacks or something like that and just offload it and not actually take it to the place that uh, is in, it's intended to go. On the flip side, we don't want to overly punish pirates who don't necessarily always know the ships that they're trying to to steal from and and while i know you know there's a lot of discussions about like how much we favor or don't favor piracy as like a, a loop in the game we don't want to um completely ice them out so that if they end up accidentally coming across let's say some boxes that were being delivered somebody else somewhere else that they just can't do anything with it 
and then it becomes kind of just like random about like what you can and can't steal and sell reasonably but they will be at a much lower cost so it's not going to be the kind of thing where like oh i can just like steal the boxes from somebody else's uh hauling contract and then i'm just rich immediately because it's just so much and i didn't have to do anything for the time and then that would just make it to where nobody could ever deliver these things because people are just constantly like camping the the routes that they would be on so the tldr is we don't want to necessarily overly restrict where you can store things but some of the high high i'll say like high security or high high value items are going to have special casing for them okay uh current storage crates are indiscernible from one another in name and appearance Will it be possible to differentiate storage containers via changes to either the name, the label, the color, or some other means? Great question. Another thing that um, we've definitely uh, talked about and have plans for, not going to be in this release, but uh, we definitely want players to lean into the inventory container boxes. And right now, they're yeah, they're, they're not differentiable. Uh, we we have ideas for things like tinting and, and labeling and naming. I, I don't want to say that anything there is like totally concrete that we are going to do it exactly one particular way, but we're definitely going to do something there. We, we want to give players a reason to use these uh, more. And then once you use them more, you run into the problem of how do you differentiate between them to say that like, okay, this is like my weapons container, or this is like my my armor container or this is my ship items we want players to have some way to manage all of that to to you know keep it in check like once you get a you know a few of these going it's going to become like a whack-a-mole about remembering which one it was and opening them and, and realizing it was the wrong one or calling the wrong one up from the freight elevator and so yes it's something that we're planning but don't have a specific uh, solution that we've tied ourselves down to yet. Okay. Uh, just a few more questions I think we can squeeze in here. Uh, how much total SCU can the freight elevator hold at any one time? And are all freight elevator capacities the same at all locations? Uh, I don't, they're all different. So there's, there's four different sizes. There's small, medium, large, and extra large. I don't want to speak off the top of my head to the exact volumes of those because i'll probably misremember one uh but they are different um and we want to basically encourage people to upgrade the idea is that if you have a smaller ship you shouldn't necessarily be able to do huge hauling runs on the flip side we want to encourage players being able to call up ground vehicles uh, or smaller vehicles in the freight elevators, which we have not forgotten about. I know that something that players were looking forward to, that's still something we want to support. So that the sizes of the freight elevators are designed to hold the, the ships that we want players to be able to call up from. So the small ones aren't going to be like super tiny, but uh, the larger ones were certainly going to be better for, for a hauling like 30, like 32 SU boxes, for example. Okay. Um, let's squeeze two more questions. We haven't talked about the ship lift. So the ship, the, 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 the lift that brings your ship up was one of the really cool reveals in the last, uh, the cargo episode four weeks ago. Uh, I got two questions about the ship lift here. Uh, one, will we be able to call up multiple vehicles simultaneously on a single vehicle lift? Not for this release. So again, another thing that we, we definitely have thought about and considered um, at the moment, the experience is going to be very similar to the current ASOP, which is you'll call up a ship. If there is a current ship on the on the landing platform, it'll lower and, and despawn that one, spawn the new one, then raise. Uh, so it'll just be one at a time for this release. But if you can move it off to the side, you can chain the, the request to, to get multiple like that. But what you won't be able to do is like say, like, OK, I want my cutlass and i want my gladius and i want my um rock or something like that and then you know on on no, a big no, platform no, like, nobody like says four they ships want their, their rock i'm sorry I said nobody nobody has ever in the world in the history of star citizen said i want my rock ds or did you say rock or rock ds yes <laughs> i said rock <laughs> okay no, the rock is fine just nobody's ever said i want my rock ds that's never happened <laughs> no i didn't say ds uh, I'm sorry. But yeah, so like 
there's some design considerations there as well as technical. Um, how do they come up? How do you pick multiple at the same time? How do you say if there's three ships on the platform and you only want to swap one of them out? Like all of that stuff just adds like a lot of complexity to the system that we just didn't want to mess with now. We want to keep it simple and, and, and get it working. There's a lot that's already changing in the ship spawning flow right now. Adding this in the middle of all of that is was just a, a, a step too far. So we we are trying to keep this step and you know an iterative step as far as making the changes to spawning from, via this ship platform. But we will revisit this. It is something we we want uh, again to encourage people to upgrade to the larger hangars. So and, you know we want we want that to not just be useful for big ships, but also m multiple and also multi crewing and and all of that. I'm sorry, chat. It's not that I don't like the Rock DS. It's that I hate it. Um, it's okay. It, it doesn't like you either. It, we're, we're allowed to like some things and not like other things. People think you just have to... I got feelings. I got It knows what it did. It doesn't do nothing. Sorry. Uh, is there any other location... Oh, sorry. Last ship question. Is there any other, other location besides the personal hangars where the ship lifts are being used to deliver vehicles to you? Not at the moment. Okay. Um, all right, last question. I was just thinking about what I said, and I am going to get that message now. I'm in trouble. Uh, Fauna, 323 has the addition of, of the Copian and the Merrick Bird. Hypothetically, don't you dare say not in this release. Hypothetically, if I go out to the plains of, 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 of Lorville or Microtech and I, I coerce a, a, a kind and gentle Copian onto my ship and I bring that ship back to my personal hangar and then I coerce the kind and gentle Copian out of my ship into my personal hangar and then I leave, does that Copian now persist in my personal hangar for all time? <laughs> Uh, oh man. Uh, so the, it's going to work. The way to think about what will persist in the hangars is just to think about what will persist in the ships because it's identical. Uh, and I think people have probably seen the video of like people spending like a month collecting NPCs in the game and in their ship. Uh, so for now, for sure, uh, if it persists in the vehicle, it's going to persist in, in the hangar. In this case, yes, I believe that the Copion would persist. I haven't personally tested that, so, but I'm pretty sure it would persist. Um, and in fact, we already have bugs right now about people um, being attacked <laughs> in the station by like the Copions and stuff that are like kind of, uh, we'll say, encouraged into the station by some other players. So like if you're able to get one all the way into your hangar, then like, okay, you're going to get rewarded. Uh, maybe that's your own security mechanism. We, we solved it. I just, I just, you know, I was so excited for this, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the fauna stuff. And I see, I see the back, so many people are like, can we kill it? Can't we hunt and murder it? And I'm just like, that's. We need pets. Just, just, I mean, there you go, pets. We, we did it. Be, be kind and gentle. Bring them home and get and get let them sit on the couch and stuff and, and and keep them from falling. Be careful. Be sure they don't fall down the vehicle lift when the doors open and stuff. So I'm just like I said. All right, I want to be real clear. I'm joking. I'm having fun. But he did not say that's a definite thing. That is clearly an untested situation that I presented to Chad. Uh, he's speaking hypothetically based on his knowledge of how the system works right now. Uh, this is not a guarantee or, or a, uh, a, a, an admittal that it does work, um, but I want all of you, every single one of you, to try it when the time comes because I'd rather build little personal zoos than be out there murdering a bunch of virtual dog cat things who just want to be loved. Um, that, that's it. Hey, Chad, you want to see my cobra hiss? Yeah. Sh show my cobra hiss. Look at this. Look at that. Look at my new toy. Amazing. Isn't it cool? That is really cool, actually. It's cool. It's got a, it's got a Viper driving. 
And it's got Cobra Commander in there. It's really cool. I like it. All right, oh, back wow. to me. Everybody, that's the show. Thanks a lot. Thanks for hanging out at the end of this Friday. I think we're going to do a raid uh, for somebody. I, I didn't check my messages to see who, but if there's a raid, be sure you tell the, uh, 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 spread, the, spread the love and support our fellow Star Citizen streamers on this fine day. Uh, if you haven't watched it, check out this week's episode of ISC. It's all about uh, the water wizards who are, who are, who are uh, doing all these big improvements to the graphics and simulation and rendering for water. Uh, next week, uh, come back to another episode of ISC. Uh, it's going to be on the whole host of arena commander updates that are coming in 323 you thought the pu just had a whole bunch of pu stuff the, the 323 just had a whole bunch of pu stuff it's even got a whole bunch of stuff uh, uh in uh 323 including new experimental modes and new racetracks and a whole bunch of fixes and the return of something folks have been waiting for for a long time that i'm not going to spoil right now because i got to make another show for next thursday and then we'll come right back here next friday and we'll have uh uh, 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 uh all the members of the ui team boom uh, sit in the chair, and uh, they'll answer your questions about UI stuff, star map and, and interior map and uh, mobile glass and all that stuff. So uh, that was Chad. Say hi, Chad. Bye, Chad. Hi, Chad. Goodbye, yeah. Chad. I'm Jared. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for staying with us for extra time today. Uh, we know how much the, this topic means to folks. Uh, take care, and yeah, I'll see you next week, everybody.